The Joint Light Tactical Vehicle JLTV is a United States military, specifically US Army, USSOCOM, and US Marine Corps program to part replace the Humvee with a family of more survivable vehicles with greater payload. The JLTV program was approved in 2006 to begin early studies. The JLTV program incorporates lessons learned from the earlier and now halted Future Tactical Truck Systems FTTS program and other associated efforts. JLTV has evolved throughout various development phases and milestones but variants are capable of performing armament carrier, utility, command and control shelter, ambulance, reconnaissance and a variety of other tactical and logistic support roles. JLTV complies with the U.S. Army's Long-Term Armor Strategy LTAS. The JLTV program including numbers required and pricing evolved considerably as the program developed. Oshkosh's LATV was selected as the winner of the JLTV program on 25 August 2015 and awarded an initial production contract for up to 16,901 JLTVs. Topic history The High Mobility Multipurpose Wheeled Vehicle HMMWV, which first entered service in 1985, was developed during the Cold War when improvised explosive devices IEDs, and asymmetric warfare were not a major factor for military planners. The HMMWVs demonstrated vulnerability to IEDs and the difficulties and costs experienced in satisfactorily up-armoring HMMWVs led to the development of a family of more survivable vehicles with greater payload and mobility. JLTV was originally reported as a one-for-one -one HMMWV replacement, however, U.S. DOD officials now emphasize that JLTVs are not intended to replace all HMMWVs. The JLTV publicly emerged in 2006. Early government documents noted, in response to an operational need and an aging fleet of light tactical wheeled vehicles, the joint services have developed a requirement for a new tactical wheeled vehicle platform that will provide increased force protection, survivability, and improved capacity over the current up armored Humvee while balancing mobility and transportability requirements with total ownership costs. The joint service nature of the effort was assured through congressional language in the fiscal year 2006 FY06 Authorization Act, which mandated that any future tactical wheeled vehicle program would be a joint program. The Joint Chief of Staff's Joint Requirements Oversight Council (JROC) approved the JLTV program in November 2006. This began a 13-month concept refinement phase, which is a pre-systems acquisition process designed to further develop the initial concepts resident in the Initial Capabilities Document The concept refinement phase also includes an analysis of alternatives our at the conclusion of the concept refinement phase in December 2007, the Joint Program Office JPO, JLTV Project Manager PM, intended to transition the program directly into the engineering, manufacturing, and development EMD phase. However, as the calendar date for the milestone approached, it became clear that the Milestone Decision Authority MDA, Defense Acquisition Executive Day, John Young, would not support the JLTV program entering into the acquisition process at that time. He denied the request and instructed the Army and the Marine Corps to develop a more vigorous technology development TD phase. The U.S. DOD released a request for proposal RFP for the TD phase of the JLTV program on 5 February 2008. Industry proposals were due no later than 7 April. TD phase contract award was postponed in July 2008. The following companies and partnerships responded to the TD phase RFP: Boeing, Textron, and Millenworks General Dynamics and AM General as General Tactical Vehicles, Force Protection Inc. and DRS Technologies, officially rejected on the 14th of August 2008. Bay Systems and Navistar Northrop Grumman, Oshkosh Truck and Plassen Lockheed Martin, Bay Systems Land and Armaments Global Tactical Systems, Alcoa Defense and JWF Industries. 
Blackwater and Raytheon on the 28th of October 2008, the Pentagon narrowed the field of vendors to Lockheed Martin, General Tactical Vehicles and Base Systems, Navistar. Each team were awarded contracts worth between $35.9 million and $45 million to begin the next phase of the program, which at the time was stated to be worth $20 billion or more. The Northrop Grumman – Oshkosh Group contested the awards but their protest was denied by the Government Accountability Office on 17 February 2009. Australia signed an agreement in February 2009 to fund nine of the first 30 JLTV prototypes. While a final decision has yet to be made, the Australian government is now pursuing the Hawke, a domestically developed vehicle through Thales Australia. India became interested in the program in 2009, but is currently pursuing an indigenous solution. Israel and the UK have also expressed interest in the program. On the 1st of June 2010, it was confirmed that all three contractors had delivered seven JLTV platforms for TD phase evaluation. The U.S. Army appeared to have reduced its support for the program at this time, omitting JLTV numbers from its tactical vehicle strategy published in June 2010. However, the U.S. Army clarified that JLTVs are slated to both replace and complement the Humvee. JLTV's TD phase lasted 27 months and in May 2011 it was completed. In February 2011, the JLTV Program Office announced the award of the follow-on engineering and manufacturing development phase contract would be delayed until January or February 2012 because the Army changed requirements for the JLTV, requiring it to have the same level of underbody protection as the mine-resistant, ambush-protected all-terrain vehicle MATV. .Upon exiting the TD phase CDD version 3.3 was published. By the time CDD version 3.3 was published, payload options had been reduced to only two. CDD version 3.3 dropped payload verbiage and replaced it with variants. From that point on there were only two required variants, the Combat Tactical Vehicle CTV configuration, which would replace the previous Category A and Category B configurations, would be a four-seat vehicle with a 3,500-pound payload. The Category B variant was eliminated because it proved to be too heavy to meet the required weight of approximately 15,639 pounds to make it transportable by Army CH-47F and Marine Corps CH-53K helicopters. The Combat Support Vehicle CSV, which would replace the previous Category C configuration, would be a two-seat vehicle with a 5,100-pound payload. The two variants that appeared in CDD version 3.3 now had requirements for configurations. Configuration refers to the different types of mission packages that will be installed into each of the two variants. CDD version 3.3 required six configurations. The draft request for proposals (RFP) for JLTV's EMD phase was released on the 2nd of October 2011. This called for an average unit manufacturing cost between $230,000 and $270,000 across the JLTV family of vehicles. The cost target for the B-Kit armor package remains at $65,000. EMD phase requirements also created some trade space for industry by easing weight and mobility constraints. At this time JLTV was in danger of severe budget cuts and possible full cancellation in the wake of spiraling costs, delays and defense-wide budgetary cutbacks. It was also competing against the HMMWV Modernized Expanded Capacity Vehicle MECV program, the draft RFP for which was released on the 11th of August 2011. On 26 January 2012 the request for proposals for JLTV's EMD phase was released. Budget priorities for FY13 released on the same day included the termination of the HMMWV MECV recap program in order to focus vehicle modernization resources on JLTV.
Topic engineering and Manufacturing Development EMD Phase Not all of the TD Phase contract award teamings remained in place for JLTV's Engineering and Manufacturing Development EMD Phase. By late March 2012 bids due the 27th of March, it was clear that at least six teams had submitted responses to the EMD Phase RFP, and following EMD Phase contract awards on 23 August 2012, in September Hardwire LLC disclosed itself as a previously unknown seventh bidder. The bidders were, AM General still at the time teamed with GTV for a separate offering offered the blast-resistant vehicle, off-road BRVO, a product based on its own R&D, and a design that leveraged some of AM General's then recent experience with HMMWV MECV designs. Base Systems, previously teamed with Navistar, realigned its team for the EMD phase to include Ford, Ford Motor Company's Power Stroke 6.7 liter turbocharged diesel engine. Ford had been considering participating in the JLTV's EMD competition with its own offering and proposed a design that capitalized on earlier TD phase work with the Valanx. GTV dropped its TD phase developed design and opted to offer a lowest risk solution, a further development of the in-production MOWAG Eagle. Lockheed Martin opted to stay with its TD phase offering, albeit a version that according to the company was hundreds of pounds lighter in weight. Navistar, which broke away from base systems for the EMD phase, offered a variant of its Saratoga light tactical vehicle. This unveiled in October 2011 as a middle ground offering between the HMMWV and JLTV, the latter with its then current TD phase spec still technically in place. Oshkosh proposed a variant of the company's LATV, unveiled in October 2011. LATV has developmental origins that trace back to Oshkosh, Northrop Grumman's failed initial JLTV proposal. Hardwire offered a proposal featuring a hybrid electric drivetrain. Hardwire's armor solutions have been employed on MRAP vehicles, and the company is known for developing an innovative, blast chimney that it designed to provide an outlet for energy released in an underbelly blast. On 23 August 2012, the Army and Marine Corps selected the Lockheed Martin JLTV, the Oshkosh LATV, and the AM General BRVO as the winners of the Engineering and Manufacturing Development EMD phase of the competition. The three companies were awarded a contract to build 22 prototype vehicles in 27 months to be judged by the services. Losing bidder Navistar filed a protest with the Government Accountability Office over the evaluation criteria on 31 August 2012. The company withdrew the protest on 4 September 2012. On 26 June 2013, Lockheed Martin completed the last of 22 JLTVs produced for the EMD phase. On 8 August 2013, Oshkosh delivered its first LATV JLTV prototype to the Army for government testing following a successful vehicle inspection by the Defense Contract Management Agency DCMA. The four-door multi-purpose variant and two-door utility variant were provided for evaluations. On 14 August 2013, both AM General and Lockheed delivered their 22 vehicles to the Army and Marine Corps to participate in a 14-month government evaluation and testing process. On 27 August 2013, the Army and Marine Corps announced that full-scale testing of JLTV prototypes would begin the following week, with all three vendors having had 66 vehicles delivered. Each company delivered 22 vehicles and six trailers to Aberdeen Proving Ground, Maryland, and Yuma Proving Ground, Arizona. Previous testing had already put the vehicles through more than 400 ballistic and blast tests on armor testing samples, underbody blast testing, and more than 1,000 miles in shakedown testing. Soldiers from the Army Test and Evaluation Command and personnel from the Defense Department's Office of Test and Evaluation would put the vehicles through realistic and rigorous field testing during 14 months of government performance testing. Testing was to be completed by FY 2015, with a production contract to be awarded to a single vendor for nearly 55,000 vehicles. 
On 3 September 2013, full pace, full scope JLTV testing began at Aberdeen Proving Ground, Yuma Proving Ground, and Redstone Arsenal, Alabama. Testing of the JLTV was temporarily halted in early October during the two week U.S. government shutdown of 2013. Civilian workers were furloughed and test sites were closed within hours. Work restarted immediately when the shutdown ended, though one site remained closed until the 22nd of October. The Army and Marine Corps have vowed commitment to buying nearly 55,000 JLTVs even in the face of sequestration cuts. This level of support was given while major acquisition programs like the ground combat vehicle were in danger of cuts and eventually cancelled, which potentially meant the Army was favoring replacing Humvees more than the M2 Bradley. Army leaders worried that the Marines' priority with the amphibious combat vehicle program could cause them to back out of JLTV procurement. However, the Marines said procurement plans for the two efforts did not overlap and should not conflict with each other. On the 1st of October 2013, the Defense Department Inspector General launched a year-long audit of the Joint Light Tactical Vehicle Program. It was one of about a dozen acquisition programs outlined in the IG's FY 2014 audit plan. The audit was to determine whether Army and Marine officials were overseeing and managing the program effectively before low-rate production begins. A June 2013 report by the Congressional Research Service estimated the program cost at $23 billion, or $400,000 per vehicle. Military leaders contended the unit cost is to be $250,000. The Army planned to issue a request for proposals to companies interested in bidding for production contracts in mid-November 2014, and to pick a winner possibly by July 2015. Discrepancies in unit cost have been attributed to different methods for analyzing cost. The Pentagon IG report concluded program officials appropriately assessed the affordability of the effort, and that average unit production cost remains stable at $250,000. All three vehicles completed limited user testing and production readiness reviews by mid-November 2014. Topic final selection The Army released the final JLTV RFP for low-rate initial production and full-rate production on 12 December 2014, clearing the way for AM General, Lockheed Martin, and Oshkosh Defense to submit their vehicle proposals. The Army gave competitors until 10 February 2015, to refine and submit their bids. The Army, on behalf of itself and the Marines, stated plans to select a winner and issue a single contract award in the late summer of 2015. The winning contractor would build approximately 17,000 JLTVs for the Army and Marines during three years of LRIP, followed by five years of FRP. The first Army unit would be equipped with JLTVs in FY 2018, and the Army's complete acquisition of 49,099 JLTVs would be completed in 2040, with 2,200 JLTVs delivered each year between 2020-36. The Marines would begin acquiring their then required 5,500 JLTVs at the beginning of production and would be completed by FY 2022. FY 2015 budget requests included $164.6 million RDT and E45.7 million dollars for 176 JLTV Army and $7.5 million RDT and E11.5 million dollars for 7 USMC JLTV in various configurations. The total procurement cost of the JLTV program was quoted as $30.04 billion official DOD FY2015 estimate, plus $0.98 billion in research and development RDT and e funds, giving a total estimated program cost of $31.03 billion figures are aggregated annual funds spent over the life of the program with no price, inflation adjustment. 
The GAO estimated that the DOD will allocate about $53.5 billion for the JLTV program, split $1.082 billion for RDT and E and at least $52.298 billion for procurement. By April 2015 TACOM had rescheduled JLTV's milestone C decision for August 2015. The Army and Marines still expected LRIP to commence in FY2015, with TACOM expecting JLTV to enter full rate production by FY2018. The Army expected JLTV to achieve initial operational capability in 2019. Oshkosh was selected on 25 August 2015. The award includes a base contract and eight option years covering three years of LRIP and five years of FRP. The initial contract award is valued at $114 million and is for two-year LRIP. LRIP was slated to begin in the first quarter of FY 2016, with Oshkosh commencing delivery of vehicles approximately 10 months after contract award. A FRP decision was expected in FY 2018, with associated production commencing in November or December 2019. A FRP decision is now expected in FY 2019. The JLTV contract award has a value of up to $6.749 billion and calls for a maximum of 16,901 JLTVs, and includes a sustainment element. JLTV manufacturing will be performed in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. Oshkosh CEO, Charles Szews, said the production contract award would involve more than 300 suppliers in 31 states across the country. The Army initially refused to detail why the LATV was chosen over its competitors, likely owing to anticipations of protests from either or both of the losing bidders, these to be submitted within 10 days of contract award. On 8 September 2015, it was reported that Lockheed Martin would protest the award. On the same day, it was also disclosed that AM General had decided not to file a protest. Any work that would be performed under the contract stopped during the review period. On 15 December 2015 the Government Accountability Office GAO dismissed Lockheed Martin's protest because the company on of December 2015 decided to file a notice of post-award bid protest with the U.S. Court of Federal Claims. According to a source with knowledge of the procedures, it is uncommon for a company to file with the court close to a GAO protest decision. Immediately after the GAO dismissed the protest, the Army instructed Oshkosh to resume work on the JLTV order. Lockheed Martin filed a preliminary injunction on 17 December, stating that new Army supplied information related to the contract emerged toward the end of the GAO's protest process that was not considered before their ruling and no deadline extension was granted. The U.S. Court of Federal Claims denied Lockheed Martin's request to stop work while the lawsuit was pending, allowing Oshkosh to continue work during the process. The company withdrew its protest in the Court of Federal Claims on 17 February 2016, around the time Lockheed Martin withdrew its protest some potentially crucial data from JLTV testing was revealed. The 472-page annual report from the Pentagon's Independent Director of Operational Test and Evaluation revealed that in testing Oshkosh's JLTV prototype lasted nearly six times longer between significant breakdown than the next closest, Lockheed Martin's prototype. The Oshkosh vehicle achieved 7,051 mean miles between operational mission failure MMBOMF, Lockheed Martin's vehicle achieving 1,271 MMBOMF. AM General's vehicle achieved just 526 MMBOMF. The target for JLTV is 2,400 MMBOMF, the current up armored HMMWV achieving 2,968 MMBOMF. Information on protection levels was also released. It was found in testing that both Oshkosh and Lockheed prototypes met all threshold force protection requirements and some objective level requirements. 
This level of protection is better than that of up-armored HMMWVs, and similar to MRAP mine-resistant ambush protected all-terrain vehicles MATV without the underbody improvement kit across all spectrum of tested threats. AM General's prototype would need a significant redesign to meet threshold protection requirements. More details on vehicle protection were included in a classified report. In the Pentagon's FY 2017 budget, it requested $587.5 million to procure 1,828 JLTVs for the Army and $113.2 million to procure 192 for the Marines. About $34.7 million was requested for research and development between the Army and Marines JLTV programs. Procurement objectives at this time remained 49,099 JLTV for the Army and 5,500 for the Marines. The first delivery order for JLTV was announced on the 23rd of March 2016, with the U.S. Army ordering 657 JLTVs, along with kits and support. The $243 million order included vehicles for the Army and Marines. According to Oshkosh, the vehicles, trailers, and installed kits for this order will be delivered by first quarter FY2018, as part of the original JLTV LRIP, FRP base award in August 2015. An initial 201 JLTVs for the test and evaluation phase were ordered. The 657 vehicle order is an exercised option from the program's eight option years. In April 2016 it was disclosed that JLTV's initial operating capability IOC for both services would be delayed as a result of earlier protests and associated issues. Initial USMC operating capability was stated to be delayed by about one year to the first quarter of fiscal 2020, with 69 JLTVs for a Marine Infantry Battalion, with procurement by the Marines complete by FY 2022. The Army anticipated a six-month delay, reaching IOC in mid-2019. Army procurement will last until approximately 2040, according to the Pentagon's 2016 Selected Acquisition Report SAR, released on 24 March 2016, the JLTV program has dropped its total costs by $5.9 billion. JLTV's total program costs dropped 19.32%, from $30.574 billion to $24.668 billion, due primarily to revised estimates for unit costs of vehicles and kits based on realized savings, which accounted for a $3.7 billion decrease. A stretched out procurement due to budget adjustments and revised assumptions regarding the maximum by profile year decreased costs by $1.28 billion, and several other changes, such as for cost estimation methodologies and indices, accounted for another $921 million decrease. The SARS total cost estimates include research and development, procurement, military construction, and acquisition related operations and maintenance associated with a program, the Pentagon said. These reflect actual costs so far and anticipated costs in the future, with all estimates in fully inflated then year dollars. On the 11th of May 2016, the U.S. Army disclosed that the JLTV is to be used as the platform for the upcoming Light Reconnaissance Vehicle (LRV) program, rather than procuring a new system. The LRV is to be an off-road platform for carrying a suite of intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance sensors. It is to be light enough to be carried by a CH-47 Chinook helicopter. The JLTV has been described as an interim LRV solution, and there is a possibility that evaluation of JLTV in the LRV role will determine if a change is necessary. On the 26th of September 2016, the U.S. Army placed an order for another 130 JLTVs and 748 kits valued at $42 million. This was the third JLTV order since contract award. Fiscal year 2016 funding budgets for 804 JLTVs. 
The Army received its first seven JLTVs for test at the end of September 2016 according to Colonel Shane Fulmer, JLTV project manager stated at an AUSA 2016 media briefing. He said test vehicles would be sent to Yuma, Arizona, for automotive and mobility testing, to Fort Huachuca, Arizona, for cyber, electronic warfare, and C-4 testing, Aberdeen Proving Ground, Maryland, for reliability and automotive testing, and to Alaska for automotive and environmental testing. Some JLTV testing was deferred during the EMD phase, as the government did not want to pay for testing with three suppliers, and it is now set for testing with a fleet of 100 JLTVs. By April 2017, 30 JLTVs had been delivered. Testing expected to continue through the first quarter of FY19. Also at an AUSA 2016 media briefing, Scott Davis, Program Executive Officer for Combat Support and Combat Service Support, stated that overall the JLTV program expects to cut about five years off of the total program and save about $5.9 billion, as Oshkosh's final competitive bid was low enough so the Army decided to buy to budget and get more platforms each year, which shrunk the total length of the contract and increased cost avoidances accrued each year. At AUSA 2016, Oshkosh displayed a JLTV general purpose variant equipped with an AOS R400SM K2 remote weapon system integrated with Orbital ATK's M230 LF 30mm lightweight automatic chain gun. The fourth JLTV order was announced on the 2nd of January 2017. This for 409 vehicles, 1984 installed kits, 82 packaged kits, as well as related services and support. The order is valued at an estimated $179 million and deliveries will begin late 2017. On 4 January 2017 it was reported the U.S. Air Force was considering acquiring JLTVs for its security forces that protect missile launch facilities. In its 2018 budget the Pentagon requested $1.143 billion for the JLTV program. For procurement, the DOD requested $1.099 billion split $804.4 million for 2,110 Army JLTVs, $60.50 for 140 Air Force JLTVs, and $233.60 for 527 Marines JLTVs. The Army and Marines also requested $44.2 million for research, development, test, and evaluation. In May 2017, it was reported that the JLTV RV (JLTV) reconnaissance vehicle is to be incorporated into the current JLTV Technical Data Package (TDP) and will be a kit option on the next JLTV contract. The JLTV RV is designated as the interim solution for the LRV requirement. In June 2017, the first U.S. soldiers to receive JLTVs was revealed. According to the Army, its first unit to receive JLTVs was to be an Infantry Brigade Combat Team (IBCT) in the 10th Mountain Division at Fort Drum. The bulk of their 500 HMMWVs were to be replaced by early 2019. The 173rd Airborne Brigade Combat Team in Vicenza, Italy, were to be next and then a brigade in Hawaii, probably with the 25th Infantry Division. According to the Marines, a yet-to-be-identified infantry battalion within 2 MEF at Camp Lejeune, North Carolina, will receive 69 JLTVs to replace the same number of Humvees in July 2019. Within 90 days, a similar unit with IMEF will receive JLTVs, and within another nine months, a unit with three MEF in Japan will follow. Also in June 2017 the Marines revealed they wished to adjust their acquisition objective for JLTV by 65% to up to 9,091 vehicles. 
At this time overall JLTV requirements remained at 5500 for the USMC and 49099 for the Army. On the 1st of August 2017, Oshkosh announced the 5th JLTV order. This for 748 vehicles and 2359 installed and packaged kits. The order is valued at more than $195 million and is scheduled for completion by November 2018. Oshkosh also confirmed the JLTV remains on schedule and on budget. Also in August, further details of the 140 JLTVs requested by the Air Force in FY 2018 appeared. This initial request is understood to require 46 utility variants, 48 GP variants, and 46 heavy gun carrier variants. Fielding is scheduled for FY 2019, with vehicles to be used by security forces, explosive ordnance disposal teams, para-rescue and personnel recovery units, tactical air control party teams, and special tactics forces. At this time, release documents revealed no further planned JLTV procurement for the period FY 2019-22, but the service was known to want to replace its entire fleet of 3,270 HMMWVs with JLTVs. On 1 September 2017, Oshkosh announced the sixth JLTV order, this valued at more than $177 million and including 611 vehicles and 1,789 installed and packaged kits. At AUSA 2017, JLTVs were displayed in three new configurations. Oshkosh displayed a general purpose variant fitted with a Boeing Compact Laser Weapon System CLWS, a Kongsberg Protector LW-30 Remote Weapon System RWS with a M230LF cannon, and a communications suite that includes a Thales VRC-111 and Thales VRC-121 Viper. The company also displayed a utility variant equipped with the Boeing Maneuver Short Range Air Defense launcher including a M3P.50 Cal machine gun, M299 launcher with four Longbow Hellfire missiles, sensor suite, and a communication suite including a Thales VRC-111. Raphael displayed a general-purpose vehicle fitted with the company's Samson RWS Dual Stabilized Remote Weapon Systems RWS with M230LF, and the Trophy Light Active Protection System APS. .On 21 December 2017, Oshkosh announced the seventh JLTV order, this valued at $100.1 million and including 258 vehicles and associated installed and packaged kits. At this time it was also announced that to date over 1,000 JLTVs had been delivered. On 5 February 2018, Oshkosh announced the 8th JLTV order, this valued at $106 million and including 416 vehicles and associated installed and packaged kits. On 29 June 2018, Oshkosh announced the 9th JLTV order, this valued at $484 million and including 1,574 vehicles and associated installed and packaged kits. On 28 November 2018, Oshkosh announced the 10th and most recent U.S. JLTV order, this valued at $1.69 billion and including 6,107 vehicles and associated installed and packaged kits. This 10th order brought the total of JLTVs ordered for U.S. forces to date to 11,111. U.S. budgetary documentation released in early 2018 revealed that inclusive of FY 2019 budget announcements the U.S. Air Force has now requested a total of 230 JLTVs. Also in early 2018 the Marines' 2018 planning objective for JLTV was disclosed to be 9,091, although funding as of April 2018 allowed for only 7,622 JLTVs through FY 2023, with deliveries concluding the first quarter of FY 2025. 
The Marines also have a requirement for 318 JLTV trailers by 2022. For FY 2020, the 1st of October 2019 to the 30th of September 2020, the Pentagon's JLTV funding request totals $1.641 billion. This to procure 2,530 vehicles for the Army, 1,398 for the Marines, with 3,986 more between FY2021 and FY2024, 140 for the Air Force, and 22 for the Navy. Other FY 2020 budget activities include $4.8 million for engineering and manufacturing development. In March 2019 it was reported that Army's FY2020 budget request included proposed cuts to pay for modernization priorities, with one of those proposed cuts being the JLTV. It was reported that over the coming five years the service will spend $800 million less on the JLTV program than initially expected, this potentially resulting in the purchase of 1,900 fewer vehicles. As of May 2019 the service had not changed its approved acquisition objective AAO of 49,099 JLTVs. Topic: <laughs> Fielding and deployment. Following an announcement in December 2018 that a total of 500 JLTVs would be delivered by the end of March 2019, JLTV deliveries to the Army commenced the week of 7 January 2019. The first unit to receive JLTVs was the 1st Armored Brigade Combat Team, 3rd Infantry Division at Feet. Stewart. To coincide with the first fielding Oshkosh confirmed that over 3,000 JLTVs had been delivered to the Army and Marine Corps, the Marines announced on 28 January 2019 that its first JLTV had fielded that day at the School of Infantry West at Camp Pendleton, California. By the end of May the Marines will have fielded its first 55 vehicles to support units at training locations including the School of Infantry West, School of Infantry East and the Motor Transport Maintenance Instructional Company. The first JLTVs for operations will go to 3rd Battalion, 8th Marines in Camp Lejeune, NC, and once that fielding takes place in July the Marine Corps will be able to declare initial operational capability for the JLTV. By the end of fiscal year 2019 when between 250 and 300 JLTVs will be delivered, all three Marine Expeditionary Forces, IMEF in Camp Pendleton, 2 MEF in Camp Lejeune and 3 MEF in Okinawa, Japan, will have received some combination of JLTVs. Around 1,000 further JLTVs are scheduled to be fielded during fiscal year 2020. Also in January 2019, the Army Reserve announced it was set to acquire 60 JLTVs for training in preparation for fielding to the entire force. No date for actual fielding was given. Topic: <laughs> UK mod interest. In June 2016 it was reported that to meet Package 1 of the Multi-Role Vehicle Protected MRVP requirement, the UK Ministry of Defence was in talks with the Pentagon on acquiring the JLTV via the Foreign Military Sales FMS route. We can confirm that we are talking to the US DOD regarding Package 1 of MRVP, to inform our understanding of an FMS option for the Joint Light Tactical Vehicle, said an MOD spokesman. It was stated in January 2017 by Marge, General Robert Talbot Rice, the Director of Land Equipment at the Defense Equipment and Support Arm of the Ministry of Defense MOD, that, We are working through the foreign military sales process. A letter of request has been sent to our American colleagues, and we expect a response in the next few months. 
Talbot Rice told an audience of industry executives and military personnel at the International Armoured Vehicles Conference in London on 24 January that the Army had opted for the single-source purchase due to its ability to meet UK requirements and its value for money. In July 2017, the DSCA notified US Congress of a possible sale of 2,747 JLTV vehicles and accessories to the UK. At DSEI 2017 in London Oshkosh displayed a JLTV in British Army Green and fitted with UK-specific equipment. <laughs> <laughs> Lithuanian interest According to a November 2017 report in Defence News, the Lithuanian Ministry of National Defence (MND) has contacted the US Defence Department regarding a potential acquisition of about 200 Oshkosh LATV light tactical vehicles. Under the proposed acquisition, the value of which has not been mentioned, deliveries are scheduled to begin in 2021. In February 2019, the Ministry of National Defense submitted a procurement application to the U.S. government. Lithuania's Vice Minister of National Defense added that the terms and conditions are expected to be finalized by 2020. Slovenian order Slovenian Defence Minister Karl Urjavec disclosed on 14 November that Slovenia had signed a government-to-government -government agreement with the US on the procurement of 38 JLTVs for the Army's medium-sized battlegroup. Deliveries are to run 2021-2023. This is the first confirmed foreign military sale of the JLTV brings total JLTV orders to 11,149 as of November 2018. Technical description Given the competitive nature of the JLTV competition, only limited technical detail has been released by either the U.S. Army or Oshkosh. No specific dimensions and only limited operating weight and automotive data is available. The JLTV is based around Oshkosh's TAC 4i I equals intelligent independent suspension system. Around 26,000 military vehicles are fitted with an earlier version of the system, these including the Oshkosh Medium Tactical Vehicle Replacement MTVR, Oshkosh Logistic Vehicle System Replacement LVSR, and Oshkosh MRAP All-Terrain Vehicle MATV. .The TAC-4 system has also been retro-fitted to the Force Protection Inc. Cougar and Bay Systems RG-33 MRAPs. The majority of systems supplied to date have been coil sprung. The TAC 4i version fitted to the JLTV remains undisclosed, but is not coil sprung and is of the variable adjustable ride height type with up to 20 inches 51 centimeters of wheel travel, 25% more than the current standard. The JLTV's suspension aided egress system SAE's capability levels side to side and front to rear on slopes or grades when selected by the operator. The front and rear suspension height can also be independently controlled for ship and transportability. The suspension system has ride height control at all four wheels. Motive power is provided by a digitally controlled Gale Banks Engineering 866 TV8 diesel, this based on the architecture of the General Motors GM Duramax LML. Power output is 340 horsepower. In commercial use power output of the standard Duramax LML engine is currently up to 397 horsepower 296 kilowatts at 3000 revolutions per minute. Production of the Duramax LML engine concluded in 2017, the unit replaced by the Duramax LP5. JLTV A1 models that were introduced in 2017 are powered by a derivation of this engine. An Allison 2500SP6 speed fully automatic transmission is fitted. The JLTV has been designed to comply with the U.S. Army's long term armor strategy. LTAS. 
The LTAS system follows an A-kit, B-kit principle, with vehicles designed fitted for, but not with, protection. Protection kits can be installed and uninstalled from vehicles in the field using only basic tools. The A-kit is fitted on the production line and is a combination of a limited amount of armoring, in difficult-to-access areas of the vehicle, together with a significant amount of armor installation attachments and required support structures. The bulk of the armor, the B-kit, is installed in the field on an as required basis. Two soldiers can install B-kit armor in five hours. An 800-pound RPG protection kit can be installed in two hours at field-level maintenance and completed by the crew within 30 minutes. The JLTV offers protection levels greater than those of up-armored HMMWVs and comparable to those of original MRAP class designs, but in an overall vehicle package that is considerably smaller and lighter than vehicles procured under the U.S. Marines MRAP procurement, the benefits of the A-kit, B-kit principle are that armor is only fitted when required, reducing vehicle wear and tear and, by default, whole life cycle costs. Improvements and or upgrades to armor are also far easier to integrate into an applique solution. No quantity for JLTV armoring kits has yet been disclosed, but it is anticipated that the estimated $65,000 kits will be procured on a one kit to three vehicle basis. The overall protection solution will include a spool liner to minimize perforation effects within a vehicle when the vehicle takes hostile fire. The JLTV also has an automatic fire extinguishing system to protect the crew cabin. Fuel tanks are mounted externally and shielded by the JLTV structure. Each crew seat has a combined seat and blast restraint device. Ingress time for a crew of four in combat equipment is 30 seconds or less. Egress with B kit doors is within 10 seconds. The only weight related data officially released includes a gross vehicle weight GVW of 10,266 kg. Payload for the two door variant is quoted as 2,318 kg, payload for the four door variant is quoted as 1,590 kg. The USMC required a vehicle that can be transported by their current and planned systems. In April 2009, Marine Corps Commandant General James Conway warned that the Marines will not buy a vehicle that's 20,000 pounds. Requirements called for the cabin heater to raise the crew compartment temperature from minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit minus 40 degrees Celsius to 65 degrees Fahrenheit 18 degrees Celsius in one hour. The air conditioner should drop the temperature from 120 degrees Fahrenheit 49 degrees Celsius to 90 degrees Fahrenheit 32 degrees Celsius within 40 minutes. The JLTV was to be equipped with a diagnostic monitoring system that will electronically alert the operator of equipment failures so that they can be fixed. The electronic monitoring will observe the fuel, air intake, engine, cooling, transmission, energy storage, power generation and vehicle speed as well as other systems. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Mobility The Pentagon required at least 600 mean miles before an essential function failure. The vehicle was to be capable of traveling for 3 miles 5 kilometers cross-country having endured three 0.3-inch perforations of half-full main fuel tanks. The JLTV must also operate in altitudes from minus 500 feet to 12,000 feet and maintain full mission capability in temperatures from minus 40 to 125 degrees Fahrenheit minus 40 to 52 degrees Celsius, according to established requirements. When temperatures drop well below zero, the JLTV must start within one minute with no external aids, kits or prior warming of the batteries. The vehicle must be capable of traveling 350 paved miles at 35 miles per hour, 56 kilometers per hour or 300 miles, 480 kilometers in operational terrain on a single tank of JP8 fuel. 
acceleration from 0 to 30 miles per hour, 0 to 48 kilometers per hour in 9.7 seconds on dry level hard terrain was required as a threshold requirement, objective being 7 seconds, as was the ability to ford 60 inches, 150 centimeters of salt water without a fording kit in forward and reverse while maintaining contact with the ground. Other tactically driven mobility requirements include a threshold 27 foot turning radius and the ability to climb 24 inch vertical obstacles in forward and reverse. JLTV must be able to drive off an 18 inch vertical step at 15 miles per hour and sustain no mechanical damage. It will be capable of traversing a 20 degree V ditch that is 25 feet wide at an approach angle of 45 degree. It can jump a 6-inch parallel curb at 15 miles per hour and traverse a 20-foot flight of stairs at 5 miles per hour. It must climb a 60% dry, hard-surfaced gradient and traverse a 40% side slope with no degradation in driver control. JLTV is transportable by sea, rail, and air. The JLTV is transportable on all classes of ocean-going transport ships with minimal disassembly. It was required to be rail transportable on CONUS and NATO country railways. Air transportability will be by fixed wing aircraft as large as larger than the C 130 Hercules and sling loadable with rotary wing aircraft such as the CH 47 per Mega Henry 47, and CH 53. The proposed ambulance variant was to be air droppable by C 5 and C 17 fixed wing aircraft. The JLTV can be prepared in 30 minutes for transport by aircraft, maritime prepositioning force ships or rail. This is aided by an adjustable height suspension. Versions <laughs> 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 The JLTV family and its nomenclature evolved throughout the development process and to date the U.S. Army has allocated M designations to four individual JLTV configurations. In JLTV's initial capability document ICD, there were four payload options, this later reduced to three, payload categories A, B, and C all were to be transportable externally by CH-47 and CH-53 helicopters and internally by C-1 130 aircraft. Topic: Payload category A. Payload category of vehicles were to fill the role of battle space awareness with a payload capacity of 3500 pounds 1600 kilograms general purpose mobility general purpose mobility JLTV AGP was the only variant in payload category A designed for general purpose utility vehicle for use by the army and marine corps with a four person capacity Unlike other variants, a C130 would be capable of transporting two vehicles at a time Topic. Payload Category B Payload Category B vehicles was to fill the role of force application with a payload capacity of 4,000 to 4,500 pounds 1,800 to 2,000 kilograms. Infantry Carrier – The Infantry Carrier JLTV BIC, had a six-person capacity, and was designed to carry a fire team of troops. Each service may have received a different vehicle, or have used the same configuration. Reconnaissance – Scout – Six-seat configuration for use by the U.S. Army. Reconnaissance – Knight – Six-seat configuration for use by the U.S. Army. Command and control on the move, four-seat command and control JLTV BC2 OTM, configuration for use by the U.S. Army. Heavy guns carrier, heavy guns carrier for use by the U.S. Army and Marine Corps for convoy escort, military police, and patrol with four seats and a gunner position. Close combat weapons carrier, four-seat close combat weapons carrier for use by the U.S. Army and Marine Corps. 
Utility vehicle, two-seat utility vehicle for use by the USMC. Ambulance, ambulance configuration for use by the U.S. Army and Marine Corps. Three seats and two litters. Topic. Payload Category C Payload Category C vehicles were to fill the role of focused logistics with a payload of 5,100 pounds 2,300 kilograms. Shelter carrier, utility, prime mover, two-seat shelter carrier, utility, prime mover for use by the U.S. Army and Marine Corps. Ambulance, higher capacity ambulance configuration for use by the U.S. Army and Marine Corps. Three seats and four litters, by the Time Capability Development Document CDD version 3.3 was published at the conclusion of JLTV's Technology Development TD phase, payload options had been reduced to only two and payload verbiage had been dropped, this replaced by reference to variants. From that point on two stated variants were required, the Combat Tactical Vehicle CTV and Combat Support Vehicle CSV. .The previous Category B variant was eliminated because it proved to be too heavy to meet the required weight of approximately 15,639 pounds to make it transportable by Army CH-47F and Marine Corps CH-53K heavy lift helicopters, the Combat Tactical Vehicle CTV can configuration replaced the previous Category A and Category B configurations and was a four-seat vehicle with a 3,500-pound payload. The Combat Support Vehicle CSV replaced the previous Category C configuration and was a two-seat vehicle with a 5,100-pound payload. The CTV and CSV variants that appeared in CDD version 3.3 had requirements for configurations. Configuration refers to the different types of mission packages that would be installed into each of the two variants. CDD version 3.3 required six configurations. CDD version 3.6 was published for entry into the EMD phase in August, this reducing from six to four the total number of two configurations required. The JLTV family now consists of three base vehicle platforms, Utility JLTV UTL, Close Combat Weapons Carrier JLTV CCWC, and General Purpose JLTV GP. The Utility Base Vehicle Platform is a two-door configuration, the General Purpose and Close Combat Weapons Carrier Base Vehicle Platforms are a four-door configuration. Standard U.S. military M designators are applied base vehicle platforms when outfitted to a specific mission package configuration. These currently are M1278 Heavy Guns Carrier, General Purpose JLTV -GP Base Vehicle Platform in Heavy Guns Carrier Mission Package Configuration M1279 Utility, Utility JLTV UTL, Base Vehicle Platform in Utility Mission Package Configuration M1280 General Purpose, General Purpose JLTV GP, Base Vehicle Platform in General Purpose Mission Package Configuration M1281 Close Combat Weapons Carrier, Close Combat Weapons Carrier JLTV CCWC, Base Vehicle Platform in Close Combat Weapons Carrier Mission Package Configuration There a is also a companion trailer JLTVT, this towable by all JLTV variants. Topic. LATV specific versions Oshkosh showcased for the first time the LATV ambulance at the Association of the United States Army AUSA Global Force Symposium in Huntsville, Alabama, from March 26–28, 2019. The LATV ambulance is based on the utility configuration base platform and the rear can hold four litters or up to eight seated patients or a combination of the two. 
At present the LATV ambulance is not a JLTV variant but according to the company the design will be marketed to the U.S. Army and Marines. Topic: Operators. Topic: Current operators. United States of America, U.S. Army, Marines, and Air Force contract award on the 25th of August 2015. Current requirements are 49,099 Army, 9,091 with 7,622 funded Marines, 230 requested desire for 3,270 by the Air Force. The initial JLTV contract award has a potential value of $6.749 billion and calls for a maximum of 16,901 JLTVs. Topic: Future operators. Slovenia, Slovenian Ground Force, signed government-to-government -government agreement for the procurement of 38 JLTVs in November 2018, with deliveries to take place in 2021 to 2023. Topic: Potential operators. United Kingdom, British Army, in June 2016, it was disclosed that the UK MOD was in talks regarding the potential acquisition of JLTV as an FMS. Requirement thought to be around 747 JLTVs, the quoted 2,747 figure an aspirational total to simplify additional acquisitions in the future. Lithuania, Lithuanian Army, the Lithuanian Ministry of Defense MOD, has contacted the U.S. Defense Department regarding a potential acquisition of about 200 Oshkosh LATV light tactical vehicles, i.e. the JLTV. See also Future tactical truck systems Thales Hawke, winning bid in 2011 for the Australian Army's tactical vehicle program, beating out JLTV designs and other offerings. Combat tactical vehicle, technology demonstrator.